Reliance Commercial Finance presents India SME Forum 2012. Find out the secrets of success in a series of seminars exclusively for smart entrepreneurs. Join India's biggest SME initiative to boost your business and celebrate SME achievers with India SME Hunger Award. ultimately started off as being a small and medium enterprise. So let's understand. So each one of you has got the ability to become another Procter & Gamble or a Tata or anybody. Right? So let's keep that larger picture in mind when we talk about funding and what we need to do about funding and so on. What I'm really going to talk about is how do we as lenders look at you? Okay? What is it that we are looking for and what you can do to make your life a lot better? One of the things that, that JT did speak about was please don't listen to your salary accountant. Who only will advise you, who listen to him if he tells you something more meaningful than merely avoiding tax. Right? So look at, take professional <coughs> advice, but take it in a way it is consistent with your larger vision for the future. Where do you really want to go? Okay. One of the problems that we face is that <coughs> SME sector is very important, but at the end of the day, only 7% of the SMEs in the country, in this source is from Reserve Bank source and authentic source, only 7% people get formal loans from either banks or NDFCs. 93% of the people either depend on themselves or they go to the money lender. So there is a huge amount of opportunity that the SMEs can actually create for themselves in occupying the mind space of the banks or the NDFCs. Clearly, one of the biggest problems that I come across is their inability or unwillingness to go beyond what they are. Chalta hai, I have reached, you know, I have a steady income, I am quite happy with what I am doing, I don't want to grow. If somebody doesn't want to grow, what really happens is, and it's a, it's a universal truth that, and uh, you know, if you, if you go back to the Charles Darwin's uh, statement that any organization or any organism that does not adapt and change will ultimately die. That is exactly why large number of SMEs, more than 50% of them die in just four years time. It is because of their inability and unwillingness to scale up and see beyond their goals. So what are the strengths and weaknesses? Essentially, I'm not going to delve too much into it, but we all know one of the most important strengths is the person's own josh his own ability to get things done, the Jugada mentality, all of that is really great. But with that comes a certain <coughs> amount of lack of vision. With that it comes, brings in a certain amount of inability to attract the right kind of people, delegate or give them more authority, build a certain amount of brand and clearly everybody is limited by his own short term vision. Ki, you know, I need to survive for the next two to three years because I don't have anything else to do. That is really what is really killing KSMEs. Phenomenal opportunities, as you can see, more and more companies are actually doing outsourcing. When I say outsourcing, I don't mean BPO. I only mean procuring every single source or uh, every single raw material or uh, service that you really get from somebody else rather than manufacturing one's own. So greater amount of ancillarization is happening, greater amount of outsourcing is happening. And every single ancillary unit across the world is essentially an SME. So, growing opportunities are there, only that we need to have the vision to go and tap into it and profit from it. Do we really have it is the question that we need to ask ourselves. Opportunities for funding are immense and you go to anybody, any bank or any NBFC or any private equity, you will have doors opening, more doors opening today than they were even probably 5 years or 6 years earlier. So money is not the issue but a vision is the most important part. If you don't have vision, what will happen is your inability to Face up to competition will be very great. If you don't have a vision, you will not be able to sustain in a downtrend. There are so many organizations that died in the 2008 crisis and all of them were not just laymen's. But a lot of these small and medium enterprises in the country went through a hell of a time. Right? So we need to have the ability to sustain that. How do we look at this whole uh, issue of 
SMEs, what do we really look for? We look at what sort of industry do you come from? Are you an umbrella manufacturer or are you somebody who is in bi biotechnology? Whether it is a technology oriented organization? What is the impact of change in technology on your business? Are you likely to be another Nokia which used to be a world leader and then suddenly died out? Are you an Eastman Kodak about which nobody hears about today but they were a world leader in photography films but today they are nowhere? Or are you going to be a Blackberry which has been overtaken by somebody else? Or my prediction is maybe an Apple also can have the same problem day after tomorrow if they don't change themselves with time. Clearly government policy is one issue that we always look at whether the uh, sector is subject to some kind of pollution law and all of that I give you a simple example. Tirupur which is the uh, uh, most important hub for the hosiery industry went through hell of a time because there were pollution related uh, norms that were changed and most of the companies actually had to shut down their shop for quite some time. So those are things that we need to worry about. Business risk obviously whether the future business plan is good or not, whether he has the ability to carry out his plans or is he thinking short term or is he thinking long term, all these are very important. Ultimately, what is really important is the philosophy. Does the entrepreneur or does the owner of the SME have a vision of a Steve Jobs or a Dubai Amani or is he somebody who is going to look at somehow managing the next two to three years until he finds another job right? or sells his business to somebody else and tries to make a quick buck. Is he a fly by night operator or does he have the vision to run an organization and take it to the next level for 30 years? So person's own vision, his own competence, okay? does he understand what he is doing? Does he have a, a, a certain amount of conviction in himself and is he really having the passion to drive his goals, uh, drive towards his goals? That is something which is very critical for us to see. So we see who is the guy, we see what is the business. Okay, and we also see what is the environment in which he is operating. At the end of the day, it is not a great thing to listen to your child accountant to save that 30 lakh rupees that JT talked about. But are you really getting into an act, a, a kind of an attitude of disclosing and being transparent to yourselves and to the ecosystem around you? It is no longer fashionable to avoid taxes and have tax rates. It is fashionable to say that I am the largest taxpayer in the country. You know. Shah Rukh Khan's and Akshay Kumar's of the world actually crave for that sort of a tag. That Akshay Kumar is the largest taxpayer in the country is a great brand thing that you really built. So by being transparent, you are actually building a brand. You are telling something not just to the bankers or the NBFCs that lend to you, but you are telling a story to your own customers. Customer trust will be far more if you are being transparent too as far as your financial statements are concerned. Uh, some of the things that we really get worried about that are they really transparent as we spoke about, are they really complete, are they detailed enough to reflect all the material transactions or somebody will tell me that 60% of my turnover is in cash, so I don't see it. So I don't see the opportunity to give loan to him, correct? Certainly not and I will also stay away. But if somebody says that I don't have more than 1% of my business being in cash, I get that much more comfort and that much more respect for that person. So therefore the possibility of us partnering with that person is also much greater. Right? Are they really according to the accepted accounting practices and do they really have an auditor worth the salt or is he somebody who is a crooked fellow? Right? This is very critical for us to understand to and to develop the, uh, the comfort. On the flip side, what do SMEs really want from lenders like us. They want obviously a great quality service. Not that you know you come after four months and think about your proposal kind of a story. But am I really showing that amount of passion in understanding this business? So that you can build a longer and loyal relationship. Right? Does he have to run around from credit department to operations department to finance department to sales department to legal department to get one single loan done or is he being serviced by a single point of contact? Right? Does he have access to the lender or does he have to travel 50 kilometers to the next town to get money? What is most important is that the SME is a very strange animal, you know. When you assess the business, you assess it as if you would assess a corporate's business. But while rendering service, you have to be very close to the person and render almost personalized kind of service. That's why it's a combination of personal banking and commercial banking or business banking. What is most important is today, as I said, money is available. 
But where the SME is failed or where the SME is really need is a lot of advisory and handholding. Does the financial also provide a certain amount of advisory to you? Suppose you run into trouble. What sort of attitude the lender is actually showing towards you? Hey, you are a defaulter. I am going to put you in disable. I am going to take you to court. Is that an attitude? Or is he saying, okay, let's sit down together and work with you to take you out of the financial crisis that you are in? Right? Again, relationship works both ways. If you are transparent, the banker also or the lender will also like you to be transparent. But if you are, if he gets a sense that you are actually putting a wall and you're not telling the truth, nobody will tell. Right? So it works both ways. Patience and understanding obviously again cuts both ways. So this is one thing that we really believe. The SMEs can do a lot in this area to gain the confidence of the banker or the lender. What do we do as Reliance Capital or Reliance Commercial Finance? We believe that our business is the business of the SMEs. Over the past five years, I will tell you some simple uh, uh, statistic. We started business in May 2007 and till date, we have disbursed more than 30,000 crores only to the SME sector. We are a very small company relative to the state bank of the world, but from our total balance sheet size today, after 50% of the money has come back, is only 50,000 crores. So which means essentially the entire amount of our efforts and energy has gone into the sector and supporting the sector. And what do we do differently? There is something that you would have also already heard of KYC norms, right? What does KYC actually mean? Giving your address proof, your identity proof, your PAN card, blah, blah, blah. Is that really KYC? Is that knowing your customer? Perhaps. But we say that's not good enough. We need to understand the customer. So we say we follow a UIC approach. And we need to own our customer. So we say we will take it to the next level of OYC, own your customer. How do you do that? by trying to understand the needs, by trying to create something which is personalized or customized to the business that you are really in. I can't say that this is my loan offering, whether you are an umbrella manufacturer or a biotechnology company or a BPO or a, or a chemical manufacturer, ye milega pas, lena hai lo, lo. That is not the attitude that we try to come across with. We try to make a business model oriented approach where we understand the business model and create something specific for you so that it is tailor made and fits in with your requirements. What is the range of services, range of business that you can be in or in in order to get money? Anything that is viable, anything that is meaningful, anything that is socially and economically relevant to the country. To give you examples, we have funded a scuba diving services company. How many such companies have you heard of? Right? We have funded medical counseling services. We have funded waste management contractors. We have funded private universities and colleges. It's one of our biggest business. We have funded diagnostic chains, which are focused upon providing diagnostic services in small towns. Right? We have taken somebody who's a government contractor and we have done a cash flow discounting on the money that he's going to get from the government and lent him money against that. We also fund TV serials and satellite rights. So the range is not just manufacturing, you know, you need to be in the textile business, you need to make this machinery, you have to sell generators, you have to be a transporter. Yeah, all of that is possible, but even the others which are now emerging are possible for you to get funded against, provided you have a great business model going, provided you are transparent, provided you are a person worthy of being given money. What are the tips? I want to leave you with these few tips. Believe you me, it might sound a little theoretical, but if you really take that and assimilate it and convert it into action, you will see you going from, you will certainly not come back for the SME forum next year, I can assure you, because you will be qualified for something bigger. The All India Manufacturing Seminar is where nobody will go to invite you because you are a 100 crore company, right? Borrow responsibly. For God's sake, don't borrow because money is available to you. For God's sake, don't take money from a banker because he's chasing you and saying, boss, 15% the loan will it's unsecured. We have seen this happening to our credit card industry. Everywhere you go, go to a mall, some five people will chase you, sir, credit card energy, no entry fees. And you have taken it, spent money, and at the end of the month when the bill comes, you say, I will only pay 5% and roll it over. Haven't we seen such case studies? And then ultimately, where does it lead to? A head trap. Because money that comes to you easy is the worst thing that can happen to you. 
<coughs> if you work hard for your business, if you work hard for your money, you will always deploy it responsibly and always profit. Money comes easy, it is wasted and therefore it gets into trouble. Please, please disclose what is the truth in your financial statements. Good credit history. Let me tell you today that if you have defaulted on your credit card and you are let us say 90 days past due on your credit card with X bank, 7 years earlier, I know it today. I can tell you, you will come to me for a 5 crore rupee loan, I will tell you I am going to reject it because you defaulted on your X bank credit card of 30,000 rupees and you took a personal loan, you wasted the money away of 5 lakh rupees and you then ultimately settled with the bank for 2 lakhs. I know it because your credit history is transparent. Each and every one of us who lends has to share their credit history with a central body called, called the Credit, credit, credit uh, uh, Bureau. So please do not be under the impression that you can hide information. If you are transparent and if you are able to provide, yes I went through trouble but today I have come out of it and here is the evidence. Every person would love to listen to you and give you more money because of the transparency. So please maintain a great credit history. Never ever default on your loans, even 30 days. Keep a line of distinction between your personal expenditure and your business expenditure. Our collection department keeps looking around kiske ghar mein shadi ho hai. You know why? If your son or daughter is going to get married, there is a lot of expenditure that is involved. There is a possibility that your business money will get diverted towards the expenses of the marriage. So we actually become very alert and say, kuch ho hai. Right? Please avoid that. So you have two cash boxes, one personal cash box, one company cash box. And never do this way. Right? right hand personal, left hand business, don't change your hands. This is very critical and that this is what I mean by corporate governance. Corporate governance does not mean having a high tech board and getting JT to be part of your you know, board of directors and taking advice from him and filing all the reports. No, corporate governance is a mindset. When you know the difference between your money and your business money of which you are a mere trustee, corporate governance begins and ends there. Right? So therefore, do not ever do a mixing and matching. <coughs> Timely filing of statutory returns, it's, it's fashionable to pay taxes these days. So therefore, you are actually going in the minds and the eyes of the people who are not just lenders but also venture capitalists and private equities. Any private equity guy that you go to will say, who are you? Do you have the openness and the governance for me to trust you with your money? So you are building trust factor. That is what governance is all about. Right? That's all I had to say in this session. I hope I have not bored you for, for, for too long. Thank you very much.